There was another terrorist shooting in the town of Hawara, scene of several deadly attacks this year, as two Israelis were injured in the latest shooting attack at the northern Samaria village. The IDF is conducting a manhunt in pursuit of the suspected shooters. According to Magen David Adom, the two injured Israelis suffered injuries caused by shards of glass. Shortly after the attack, the Al Fajr Brigade terrorist group claimed responsibility for the shooting. In late August, Shining Gurker and his son Aviad Nir were murdered in a terrorist shooting in Hawara. The terrorist behind that attack is still on the run. Meanwhile, the Security Cabinet held a situation assessment ahead of the upcoming Jewish holidays. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the Cabinet Ministers approved the operational deployment of security services ahead of the holidays. They emphasized the importance of providing security and a sense of security for all citizens in Israel at this time. Yesterday's historic High Court hearing held on a judicial reform law lasted over 10 hours. The historic hearing on the Basic Law and Reasonableness Bill was the culmination of nine months of political and legal turmoil for Israel over the first judicial reform legislation to pass into law. More from ALTV, Steve Leibovich. All 15 justices presided together for the first time to hear more than 12 hours of arguments on whether or not to strike down the recently passed basic law on reasonableness. Sharp words were exchanged when the government's attorney sought to diminish the constitutional significance of Israel's Declaration of Independence to refute claims made by petitioners that the court can, in extreme circumstances, annul parts of Israel's basic laws. Much of the government argument was rejecting the High Court's right to even consider the precedent of throwing out a basic law passed by the Knesset. Tensions rose when Knesset Constitution Law and Justice Committee Chair M.K. Simcha Rotman admonished the court by describing it as an oligarchy with no authority to overturn the will of the majority. Petitioners against the law warned of its profound damage to the rule of law and warned the government that it must honor and follow the decision of the High Court. The final outcome of the hearing is difficult to predict and it will take weeks, if not months, for the court to issue its verdict. Experience the power of truth with ILTV News. If you're looking for quality content and captivating visuals, join our news community and become an integral part of our team as we embark on a mission to unveil the real Israel, dismantling the web of lies and misinformation that surround reporting on Israel. By subscribing to ILTV News, you will not only have access to the latest updates, but you will also amplify our message, creating a ripple effect that carries the truth far and wide. Subscribe today and help reshape the narrative. Available on the web, Android, and Apple. And joining us now on yesterday's hearing, consequences and truly mainly to understand what's next, is founder and president of the Shurat Hadin Law Center, Nitsana Darshan Leitner. Nitsana, with so much riding on this decision, how long do you expect it will take for the court to issue, to issue a verdict? Basically, the, um, the Chief Justice, uh, Sir Hayut, uh, is finishing its term in October. However, she has three months to uh, write any decision she has left over. So it can last until January for the court to come down with the decision. Take us to the behind the scenes of the hearing. You know, over 10 hours, nine months in one moment. What happened there? Look, the um, uh, petitioners uh, filed a petition saying that uh, the Knesset, by legislating a basic law that cancel uh, the authorization of the court to uh, make any act of the government void based on non-reasonable clause, should be void. That's the argument. 
Um, and the, uh, the court has questions to both sides about this uh, issue. The court asked the petitioners, perhaps I agree with you, but who gives me, the court, the authorization to cancel a basic law? That's one thing. The other thing he's asking is um, how deep this cancellation of reasonable clause goes down to the battle of democracy that Israel will not remain democratic after this legislation on basic law. The hardened uh, question on the petitioners. On the respondents, which are the government, which is the Knesset, which is uh, Knesset member Simcha Rotman, the head of the uh, Constitution Committee, the court asked, you are actually cancelling a right of the citizen to approach us, the court, when his rights are violated. Why do you want to do that? Does it harm democracy? Um, if you agree that there is a duty for the authority, for the government, for the Knesset, or any a council to act with reasonableness, if you agree to this assumption, who will supervise that really the authority will work under reasonable clause? So that question to both sides, and uh, it was very, very difficult uh, to uh, predict what the court will rule eventually. Might the court ultimately decide to somehow kick the law back to the Knesset to make changes? So the court can do one of the three. He can uh, cancel oh, to saying it harm democracy. It's unreasonable to can to uh, legislate this law. You can't take it away from authority and cancel totally the law. He can reject the petition, saying the the law is lawful. It's okay, or we don't have a right to cancel basic law and remains it on uh, standing, or. He can do a compromise. Um, he can say, I want to change perhaps one clause of the law, uh, or I want to give it back to the Knesset to perhaps phrase it differently. Um, or uh, he can say, um, although I have a right to cancel basic law, this is not the case because the measure of uh, allowing me to cancel basic law has been so harsh so hard, so um, in, in a measure of destruction of democracy that this law that the Knesset legislature now doesn't fit this criteria and therefore it should stand. You know, much was made of the Declaration of Independence being brought into the arguments. Do the words of the Declaration of Independence have actual legal standing? So there was a interesting uh, discussion uh, with the court, who actually gives the right to the Knesset to legislate basic laws? Because originally, if you go back to the 50s when the state was created, uh, the Knesset legislated several basic laws that, instead of a constitution, that uh, formed the uh, conduct of the legislative, of the uh, executive authority, of the legislative authority, of the judiciary authority, of all the different uh, factors in the uh, in the country, or um, which is who is allowed to make aliyah, who's considered to be Jewish according to the Israeli law, etc., etc. Many, many, many years pass by, and we see that the Knesset still legislate basic laws. And then comes the question, who gives the Knesset an authority to continue and legislate basic laws. Because if we consider the basic law to be the constitution, so it was right in the beginning of the state, that's it, it's over, it's done. What the Knesset, which right has the Knesset to continue legislating in? So one of the answers to this question was the independence declaration. And uh, there was a very uh, interesting discussion whether it's true because uh, um, the uh, government said, with all due respect, you know, the, con the uh, independence uh, constitute um, declaration uh, was written uh, just to establish the state. It doesn't have any legal power. 
Um, it doesn't have a status of constitution. Nobody meant to give it a power constitution. Uh, it was a declaration signed by 37 random people. This is not a constitution. This is not where the Knesset would draw its power from. Um, and uh, quite frankly, this question rises up every time the Supreme Court has to deal with uh, the sort of the uh, uh, power of the Knesset to legislate basic laws. It's a side issue. It will not affect the ruling of the court this way or another, but it was an uh, academic discussion of uh, what gives the Knesset the power to continue legislating basic laws. Very, very interesting, Nitsana. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll definitely keep following. Thank you.